I hope you're having a great day. I'm sorry I'm late. Well, today I want to talk about something extremely, extremely important. And the more and more we research into this, it's just unbelievable how this research has always existed. And it's now about time to start creating so much awareness when it comes to the prevention of cancer, when it comes to the healing of cancer. Now, when I say the healing of cancer, I don't mean to say that the only thing I'm talking about today is going to take away your cancer. But yes, it plays a huge role in your possible recovery in your recovery and in your prevention of cancer, deadly diseases and everything that's happening. By now you would have figured out that I'm talking about sleep, but let's break it down because you see it's so easy for us to take sleep for granted. And it's so easy for us to read all these success stories where people talk about how they built their business empires and slept three hours a night and four hours of a night a night and we get inspired and we try to copy their lifestyles and then disease and sickness creeps in and all of that stuff. Number one, what we need to understand is there's a reason why we sleep. There's a reason why the universe, your God, your spiritual, you know, whatever it is, that power built a mechanism of sleep in us. Okay, if sleep wasn't important for human beings, it wouldn't be a mechanism in our life. But by now, science and medicine is showing us the magic that happens while we sleep, right from your cell repair to your protection, to your immunity, to your uh, lowering of inflammation to your fatigue levels to your growth and everything else weight loss skin hair and everything now we produce our pineal gland produces something called melatonin melatonin requires a precursor like everything else in the in the human body every hormone requires a precursor and that's called L tryptophan now what happens is with melatonin and it's so important that you understand this learn it explain it to your children and everyone else I'm not here to say that if you have a sleep a sleepless night today or tomorrow you're gonna to get cancer let's understand the depth and let's be a little more logical and use a lot of vitamin C when we're understanding this vitamin C is common sense for people who have newly joined so when we eat foods which are rich in L tryptophan it helps us to sleep better at night how do we sleep better at night all our sleep is controlled by a hormone called melatonin today melatonin in the medical world is also referred to as a powerful antioxidant and it is also referred to as a cell protector. Now, anything that can protect a human cell plays a 100% role in prevention and in your recovery. Because you see, every disease starts from a cell. Think about it. Okay, you have a heart problem, you're in, you're in your arteries, you have endothelial cells involved. You have a problem with your brain, your brain cells are involved. You have a problem with your skin, the cells beneath your skin are involved. You have a problem with your hair, your hair cells are involved. You have a problem with fat and obesity, your fat cells are involved. Everything starts off from a cell, making your cell the most important part when it comes to prevention and healing and human health. Every decision you make around your health should involve your cell. Is this decision gonna impact my cell or is it gonna do something good for my cell, negatively or positively? So cell protection is huge when it comes to cancer. Now melatonin, when we produce melatonin, when our pineal gland produces melatonin, and for everyone deeply rooted on their spiritual path, yoga, pranayama, will understand the importance of the pineal gland. We meditate on the pineal gland. We close our eyes, we look at our third eye, which is nothing but your pineal gland, because the pineal gland controls the master hormone of your body, which is melatonin, which brings us peace of mind, it lowers stress levels, it puts us to sleep, and because we sleep better, we can meditate better, we can pray better, we have mind clarity and everything else. So there is so much to do with the pineal gland. Now, our pineal gland produces melatonin. The simplest way of boosting melatonin is as the light around us darkens. So automatically, when darkness sets in, our pineal gland starts preparing melatonin to prepare our body for rest. So it starts producing melatonin and then there's a hormonal communication that happens across the body and we start feeling sleepy and knowing it's getting closer and closer to bedtime. That's a perfect mechanism that's happening in the human body. Now what does melatonin do besides putting us to sleep? So look at the beauty and intelligence of the human body. First melatonin puts you to sleep, prepares you to sleep, puts you to sleep, and then the same hormone moves around your body, okay, acting like an anti-cancer vaccine. One of the best jobs that melatonin is designed to do is to recognize 
cell proliferation. Now we all know cancer cell proliferation is a huge issue. So melatonin has an anti-proliferation activity on cells, which means it is working as your immune system protecting you. It's trying to identify abnormally behaving cells which are proliferating and possibly causing or starting off a cancer and it's dealing with that by signaling to your immune system. Your pancreas, your pancreas, for everyone who has diabetes, pancreatitis, some of the worst cancers are pancreatic cancers with very, 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 you know, dim chances of recovery and a lot of suffering involved. I'm not saying this to scare you, I'm telling this to you to motivate yourself not to reach there. Now, pancreatic cancer, let's understand melatonin plays a huge role. We have melatonin receptors in our pancreas. Now, why would we have melatonin receptors in our pancreas? Because there's a binding activity happens. So as melatonin starts preparing the body for sleep, it binds with receptors in your pancreas, actually shutting down the complete production, not the complete, but most production of insulin and digestive enzymes. We need digestive enzymes to break down food and we need insulin to basically help us when we eat in food and our blood sugar levels rise. So what is it trying to tell us that as the body starts preparing for sleep, we shouldn't be eating food. Okay, so if we are producing melatonin, but we're still having a late dinner or a heavy meal, we basically disable our pancreas to produce digestive enzymes, which is why most people who have late meals have indigestion, bloating, flatulence, acidity, and all of those problems, and your blood sugar levels are out of, completely out of whack. So when you look at a diabetic, for example, okay, your blood sugar levels are terrible when you have a late night meal. And for everyone who's not diabetic, your blood sugar levels will be all over the place and then you'll start moving into insulin resistance and all of those problems because you ate a late night meal because your body's mechanism was not designed for you to eat that meal because melatonin signaled with your pancreas to stop production because you don't need the production of enzymes, nor do you need the production of insulin at that level when your body is preparing to rest. So you see late nights, late night meals, all of this stuff is impacting us in a huge way. And when you look at the lifestyle of people who have pancreatitis or pancreatic cancers, they have odd eating hours, late night meals, heavy meals, and all of these issues. So you see melatonin plays a huge role in also breaking down inflammation. Scientific research is showing the impact of melatonin on every possible cancer from a prostate to a breast cancer to a colorectal cancer to a pancreatic cancer and why because it's working with reducing inflammation keeping our immune system high and especially in women who have an ER positive that's an estrogen positive cancer it also has anti-estrogenic fat factors in melatonin which means it is designed to also work as an aromatase inhibitor to keep estrogen levels at the levels they're supposed to be. Today, most ovarian issues, cyst issues, endometriosis, ER positive breast cancers are caused because there's estrogen dominance in your body. So your doctors put you on hormone treatment, tamoxifen, to basically block estrogen completely out of your system, which is the right treatment if you need it. But all I'm trying to say is our natural defense mechanism of melatonin and sleep is designed to do this job already, which is why it is so important when it comes to prevention and when it comes to our healing. So now what do we do? Does this mean we go and start popping melatonin pills? Absolutely not, but yes, if you need it, if your sleep is all over the place, you're going through cancer, you're going through deadly diseases, you can't sleep, speak to your medical professionals to choose melatonin number one over a normal sleeping drug because melatonin will come with the pleasant side effect of helping you with this entire system. For everyone else who doesn't need melatonin and if you're thinking about using melatonin now to help you with this, understand that we can get it if we sleep at the right time. If we have our natural sleep and wake cycles, we are allowing melatonin to naturally work for us. We don't need to get melatonin from a drug, from a tablet or a pill. Now, If we have a problem sleeping every night, we can start looking at foods which are rich in L-tryptophan, which is the precursor to generating melatonin. Some of those most common foods are eggs. So now at night, you're, str you're stuck, you don't know what to eat, you're having a late night, you've had your early dinner, and you must snack. Please do not eat heavy food. The foods that you wanna choose from are things like eggs. You wanna look at cheese, you wanna look at nuts like almonds, pumpkin seeds. You want to look at hummus, anything that has chickpeas because these are all rich in L-tryptophan. You want to look at goji berries. You want to look at paneer. You want to look at lean meats like chicken and fish. All of these are rich in the amino acid L-tryptophan, which will help you to sleep. So you can even design your dinners or your late night snacks, which is a really bad habit. But if you must, these are the kind of foods that you want to choose. 
which will help you produce more melatonin, which will do all this magic that we spoke about. Besides food, what else boosts melatonin? When you have the right amount of exercise in the day, it is also tied in with your circadian rhythm and the production of melatonin. Sunshine, we must get some exposure to sunshine. If you can't get direct exposure to sunshine, even looking at the sun when it isn't too strong, like around sunset time, or early sunrise in the morning, you look at the sun directly. So you absorb sun through your eyes and that also has a huge role in your melatonin or try to get sun exposure with your skin as well. Your gut health is extremely important for melatonin. So you wanna make sure that you don't have a poor gut, like things like IBS, Crohn's, you know, when you have too much of constipation, too many loose motions or you're constantly bloated, you know you have a gut issue, so you wanna fix it by changing your lifestyle, your pre, probiotics and all of those changes that you need to make because your gut health also regulates the production of your hormones in your system. A hot bath before sleep time also helps you to generate melatonin. Cutting down your caffeine, Okay, if caffeine affects you, caffeine affects your melatonin as well. So you wanna be sure that you know what time you can have that last cup of coffee if it affects your sleep. Because if you have it too late in the day and you're caffeine sensitive, it is going to impact your melatonin. Meditation is a beautiful way of working with your pineal gland, keeping your pineal gland clean to basically produce melatonin. So things like, <clears throat> like before bed, like I said, the worst thing that can shut off melatonin is looking at a bright screen before bedtime or you wake up in the middle of the night, you can't sleep, and in a dark room, you switch on your cell phone to look at messages, social media, and all of that stuff. That is the most destructive thing that you can do when it comes to your pineal gland and your melatonin. That artificial light that you had exposure to for even five to six minutes will actually make you produce melatonin two hours after you wake up, making you feel tired even in the beginning of your day. So no artificial light exposure, at least 45 minutes to an hour before bed. And especially if you can't sleep, whatever it is you wanna do, breathe, pray, count sheep, but do not put your cell phone on in the middle of the night. And of course, there's something else which is rich in L-tryptophan and can boost our melatonin and our sleep a hot cup of milk with a little bit of turmeric, something our grandmoms all did with us. This warm cup of good quality, hormone-free, ethically sourced milk. If it suits you, great. Add a little bit of turmeric, make it into a golden milk or a turmeric latte or whatever it is that you wanna call it, and that helps us sleep better as well. So you see, what we're trying to do over here, we're talking about cancer and deadly diseases and we're talking about prevention and recovery. Before we start looking for complication, let's start looking at if we are even utilizing our own self-defense mechanisms that are inbuilt in our system, even 50%. If you're not using it, no amount of treatments, no amount of superfoods, no amount of gymming and diets is gonna help you. No amount of it, because your basic defense mechanism in the human body is compromised. So please make sure that you understand the importance of sleep and people who are going through chemo, who have cancer, all the more important. If you want the efficacy for your chemo, radiation, and your treatments to work better, you wanna come out of it the right way, you need your immune system. And the best thing for your immune system is getting the right amount of melatonin through the right quality of sleep that you sleep every single night. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. And this is a shout out for most parents who keep coming to us with their children saying, oh, my kids are not growing. They're not growing tall, they're not growing tall. What do we do? And most of these kids are sleep deprived because they're on video games, they have late nights. Some kids have a social calendar which is more busy than the adults. Parties every day and all of that stuff. Let me tell you something upright whether you like it or not, if you are compromising the sleep of your child, you are compromising melatonin, you are compromising growth factors and growth hormones that is responsible for your child's growth. No amount of growth hormone injections and proteins and all of these visits to doctors and nutritionists is gonna help you. First, fix the basics, make sure that no child ever compromises on their sleep, and then you watch how their own intelligence takes over and fixes them. Have a great day, everyone.